Well, you often hear people complaining about the rubbish that appears on television, as indeed it does. And yet, as I've said before, and may bore you by saying again, there's an awful lot of enormously good stuff, which has taken many people, many months, or even years to assemble, and after one repeat, may never be shown again. Video, for those who can afford it, is now one way of preserving what you like. But another is to have a national vault of the best of past programmes accessible to the general public. We don't have anything of this nature yet in Britain, but in America, as I've found recently, they have. In the heart of Manhattan, near the headquarters of the three major American television networks, is New York's Museum of Broadcasting, open every afternoon, five days a week. For a suggested contribution of two dollars, anyone can view the scheduled screenings on a large screen in the theatre they call the Videotech or have an hour's viewing of any of 6,000 videotaped programs, from early I Love Lucy and Adam's Family episodes, to imported British fare such as I Claudius, Civilization, and Upstairs Downstairs. Apart from entertaining the general public, the store of programs is an invaluable source for the program maker, as I discovered when making the documentary on the Lindbergh kidnapping. The idea was to provide a collection of programming that would be accessible to the general public, that anybody could come in off the street and watch, uh, to preserve the heritage of American broadcasting, both radio and television, and also to help the public understand the creative contributions that broadcasting has made to our culture, to our politics, and to society in general. The museum got started by establishing contracts with the three networks and with public broadcasting, and we have an arrangement with them to request 300 hours each year from each network of programming. And the museum is indeed a museum, not an archive. We have about 16,000 programs. There are 14 million American programs out there to collect from. But we have a staff that decides exactly which programs we want to have in our collection. And we use two criteria. Major criteria is the highest quality programming uh, from a program point of view, directing, writing, etc. And then we also have programs that were very representative of a particular period of time. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We have uh, a, a general public audience. There are a lot of people who walk in off the street or are interested in broadcasting and want to see some of the old programs. Well, what brings you two up here today? We came to watch old I Love Lucy reruns. Have you been here before? No. And why do you want to see I Love Lucy? Well, because it's not on TV anymore, and like, we never get a chance to see it, so we came here. I think we're going to look at Barishnikov and Edward Almer, who was always a great favorite of mine. You seem very busy, sir, with the, all the card indexes there. What are you doing? Well, I'm looking up programs that I think would be suitable for my son, who's seven years old. Uh, he's been to this museum once on a Saturday. It gets very busy here, and I thought it would be a good idea to have a kind of a backlog or a log of programs, which I think he would like. But I found things like Howdy Doody, which was very popular about 30 years ago, and a program called Aladdin uh, that was televised in 1958. Uh, that also I thought he would like. And there's a Dr. Seuss, Horton, Here's a Who, and uh, those are programs that I thought he would like a lot. And I just came across another one called Mr. I Imagination, program of 1949. <laughs> Television programs featuring rock stars are some of the most popular items in the museum's vaults, which also include 10,000 radio programs. Individual programs are viewed in two rooms with 23 consoles. An operator puts on the tape, which is locked into position, so the viewer never touches it. Not one cent of the $18,000 or any other money of that type ever went to me for my personal use. Every penny of it was used to pay for political expenses. I really don't need uh, Mr. Nixon to me about what my responsibilities are as a citizen. I've served this country for 14 years in the Congress and before that in the service. 
I have just as high a devotion, just as high an opinion. What I downgrade, Mr. Nixon, is the leadership the country is getting, not the country. I believe that the polls and other studies and votes in the United Nations and anyone reading the paper and any citizen of the United States must come to the conclusion that the United States no longer carries the same image of a vital society on the move with its brightest days ahead as it carried a decade or two decades ago. Political assassinations and funerals are some of the museum's most popular requests, along with more cheerful pieces of television, such as the Woody Allen special, whose guests included Billy Graham. We also uh, have a lot of scholars and students who come in. A lot of books have been written here uh, at the museum, and uh, we constantly have requests for viewing of programs. It's also a very important institution for the broadcast professional. We have a lot of people coming from the networks and local stations and public broadcasting to do research and to see programs related to the kinds of things that they want to do in the future. What are the programs that the general public uh, want to come and see most? The Nixon-Kennedy debate is a very popular uh, program, or Jacqueline Kennedy's tour of the White House is frequently requested. Uh, but then so is Elvis Presley on Ed Sullivan, uh, MASH, and a variety of other popular programs are regularly requested. Mm -hmm. oh, thanks a lot, Doc. Congratulations, Beej. You're a two-fisted drinker again. Mm -hmm. Did a terrific job, Doctor. Of course I did. What'd you expect? I'm not an intern, you know. Do you believe this thing? <laughs> You'll be that obnoxious, you better be good. The most popular program is The Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we haven't really analyzed our audience in that respect. I think that The Beatles are very popular, and it was their first uh, you know, truly public and television performance in the United States. Uh, and it's, it's just very successful. <laughs> Museum of Broadcasting in New York. A similar institution is planned here provisionally called the Museum of the Moving Image and work on it should start next year. <clears throat> well next week we'll be looking at the year of the French which follows... Job's well done, you're really satisfied when you clean with 